Vector databases have recently been popping all around and have constantly been defined as a Gen AI tool. But what if I told you that vector databases have been around for longer than AI and that it's much easier to understand how they work by taking AI out of the equation? To understand vector databases, I want you to first look above and think about all the planets in the solar system. What's the most similar planet to Earth? Well, it depends on how you're comparing all of them, doesn't it? I mean, think with me. If we're talking about mass, then Venus is the most similar to Earth. On the other hand, if we're talking about temperature, then Mars is the most similar one. And you can actually see it mathematically. But don't worry right here, I won't get deep in mathematics or show you complicated equations here. Instead, I want you to draw a straight line and divide this line into 1,000 equal parts, where each part represents temperature degrees ranging from minus 500 to positive 500. And then, let's place all the planets of the solar system on this line based on their average temperatures. Now, by looking at them, you can already estimate which are the most similar ones based on their proximity. However, if you want to be precise, or you want to compare millions of points just by looking at them, wouldn't be enough. Mathematically, though, we can determine how close these points are by calculating the actual distance between them on the line. This is called the Euclidean distance, and by calculating it, computers can then determine how similar two different data are based on their numerical distance on this line. But if we were to decide which planet to colonize next, we couldn't rely on only one factor. We'd have to consider more characteristics, or features, or let's say, dimensions of these planets. So let's add another dimension here. Let's talk about mass. If we draw another line crossing our first line now, then also divide this line into equal parts and place each planet on that other line based on its mass, we would now have a two-dimensional coordinate system where one axis represents temperature and the other axis represents mass. Now, instead of just comparing planets based on temperature alone, we can also consider their mass when determining similarity. If we map these two points in this two-dimensional space, we now have a vector. And if we calculate the Euclidean distance between them, we can still find out how similar they are based on their proximity. The Euclidean distance isn't the only way of calculating how close two points are in a multidimensional coordinate system. In fact, as we start adding many more vectors to it, there are other algorithms that can perform better to determine what are the closest vectors to each other, or, in other words, their nearest neighbors. Another way of doing that is by comparing the angle between them that is traced from the origin to each vector in the multidimensional space. This method, known as cosine similarity, measures how similar two vectors are based on their direction rather than their magnitude. Alright, let's just stop for a second here. What we've seen so far is that vector databases represent our data as vectors, or in other words, numerical data points, and that they determine similarity between these vectors mathematically based on algorithms such as Euclidean distance and cosine similarity. So, a vector database is a database optimized for storing vector representations of data and efficiently querying that data. The distance among vectors is determined by how close vectors are to each other in this multidimensional vector space, where each dimension represents a feature of our data. Alright, but where does AI fit in this whole picture? If we pull back the coordinate system we were talking about a minute ago, we can see that we're talking about only two dimensions and only nine different data points. As humans, we're completely capable of determining all of those. However, when you're talking about hundreds or even thousands of dimensions and millions or billions of data points, this task becomes extremely complex and this is where AI and the famous embedding models we've been hearing so much about come into play. Embedding models are machine learning algorithms that convert unstructured data like text, images and sound into meaningful vector representations. They take complex, non-numerical data, like text, images, audio, or even user behavior, and convert them into vectors that capture their most important features. Unlike simple attributes like mass or temperature, concepts like meaning in text or style in images don't have a straightforward numerical representation. AI embedding models solve this by learning how to map similar items closer together in a vector space. For example, in a text search, instead of just looking for exact keyword matches, an embedding model can place words like cat and feline closer together, even though they're different words. This means that when we search for cat, we might still retrieve documents containing feline because their vectors are mathematically close. This is how AI-powered search engines, recommendation systems, and chatbots find relevant information even when the exact words don't match. 
by using embedding models to convert data into high-dimensional vectors and then storing and searching these vectors efficiently in a vector database, AI enables fast and accurate similarity searches, whether it's only for text, images, or any other kind of data. And that's why vector databases and AI embedding models go hand-in-hand -hand in modern search and recommendation systems. To wrap up, while vector search itself is not new and has been applied for decades, choosing the right vector database is crucial, especially when working at scale. You need a database that can handle high-performance similarity searches, support billions of vectors, and provide real-time indexing and querying. This is where Redis 8 stands out. Redis has long been known for its blazing fast performance due to its sub-millisecond operations, and with the latest release, it has introduced major performance improvements in vector search. Benchmarks show that Redis can handle billions of vectors with real-time latency, making it the fastest vector database available today. With enhancements in latency reduction, query engine scaling, and real-time vector insertions, Redis now provides a production-ready solution for large-scale AI and search applications. If you're looking for a vector database that delivers speed, scalability, and efficiency, Redis 8 is the way to go. Try it out today and experience the fastest Redis ever. My name is Rafael Delio. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay curious.